So I have my hand stitching done. I did a very small back stitch all the way around. And as I was stitching, I was curious to see how tiny mine were. So I'm not gonna measure the stitches. I'm going to measure out an inch and see how many stitches I have within that inch. Now good sewing should probably be about 10 to 12. So I'm gonna measure an inch and I'm just picking anywhere. I did not like choose the smallest ones. And then I'm just gonna count and see how many I have here. Don't like that. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I had 10 stitches to an inch. Now, normally when you are sewing with a sewing machine, you're sewing about 12 to um, 14 stitches to an inch. So I'm pretty close to what a sewing machine would do. It's not quite as tiny, but it's pretty close. Now, if you made them bigger than this, that could cause you some problems. I'm not telling you to go and do them all over again, but if yours are huge, you might wanna go around one more time right on top of the line that you already did. Otherwise, your pillow could fall apart. So our next step before we turn the pillow right side out is to do some trimming. I'm gonna start at the opening. And this may not be on your uh, guide sheet, but what I like to do is take just the tips of my scissors just the tip, I'm not all the way like this. Okay, just the tip of my scissors. And I'm gonna make a little clip right there. And then I'm gonna come over here to the other side and make a little clip there. What that's gonna allow me to do is fold this down along here so that I have that 5 eighths of an inch. And where's my little doodad? That's pretty close. And then I'm just gonna press that a little bit with my thumb so that when it's time to flip this thing out, I have a nice straight line across there. And I'm gonna do it over here too. And part of the reason why I didn't clip this side quite as close, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna flip that over, check that it's about where it's the even is, and then just, I'm just finger pressing a little bit. If you don't have a fingernail, you can just use the, the the uh, pad of your finger, it'll work. Now, we do have to trim this. And uh, since I don't have my guide sheet, I don't know exactly how much you're supposed to trim off, but I want us to take not quite half, so a little less than half. So if you, and I know this is pen, but I'm gonna cut this right off. If you see this is half, I'm gonna do just about like that. Okay, that's probably about a fourth of an inch. Pretty dang dang close. All right, so I want to very carefully trim that much off all the way around. So I have about three eighths left over. And I wanna be really, really careful that I do it nice and straight. And I'm still just cutting about the same amount off. Now this is gonna be on the inside, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it to be too choppy either. Alrighty. Now, I also need to trim off here at the point, and I'm gonna trim it a little bit narrower. Actually, I'm gonna come back and do the point later. We start over here about the same distance, and I'm going to keep trimming. If you notice, I'm kind of cutting through my basting, and if the basting falls out, it's like no big deal because I don't need it anymore. And if I was really wanted to take the time, I would pull it all out. But it's going to be on the inside. I might not even bother. Because nobody's going to see it once the stuffing's in. Okay. 
And then I am not going to trim off where the hole is. I'm going to leave that the, the whole 5 eighths of an inch long. And I'm just going to trim over here. I'm going to stop when I get to that point. Oh, I got a stray. And then I'm going to do the same to this side over here. Now, when we were doing our uh, hand sewing on the outside, I kept saying, make sure that your knots are always on the bottom. And uh, what I found out was sometimes if you put them both on the bottom, uh, then you got a big lump in one spot. So most of the time I had one on the top and one on the bottom. They're all going to be on the inside, so it doesn't really make any difference. Okay, let's talk about the corners. You have to get rid of this excess that's right here. There's way too much stuff here. And if we try to flip this right side out, you're gonna have a big wad and you won't have that nice corner along there. So I'm gonna take my scissors and very carefully, don't cut your stitching, very carefully cut across there. And I'm gonna do that on the other side too. Just so you know, this trimming stuff makes a mess. Make sure you pick up after yourself when you get done. Alrighty, now, um, you may not have all these corners on yours, and that's okay. You just, if you have corners, trim them off. Now, I'm going to do the same thing down here. Cut it close to that stitching, but not right next to. I have probably about an eighth of an inch left. And then, because this is a really narrow corner, and this would be all mushed up in there, I'm going to trim just a little bit closer on both sides. It still might be a little mushy in that point, but I'm going to do my best to get a lot of that excess out of there. Now, what did we do with curves? Well, if you have an outside curve, you have to do this thing called notching. And they're like pie shapes and you probably should do them about every inch or so. So just with the tips of your scissors, you make a little pie shape, a little pie wedge. And that one didn't want to come out. I'm actually gonna pop in here a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. And it is really important that this is done with the points of your scissors. Don't try to do it like this because you could end up cutting right through your line of stitching. So they're about an inch apart, and you just do angle, angle, and it's making like a little triangle shape. I keep missing the point. The reason why we do this is um, there's more fabric out here than there is on the inside of your stitching. And if we don't make some notches in there, then when we try to flip it over, it's gonna be a big, uh, bulky mess. Okay, a couple more over here and I'm gonna do the other ones. It's better to go back and do it a second time. <laughs> it's better to go back, I'm gonna move out a little bit. It's so hard to get this in the frame. It's better to go back and do it a second time than it is to, uh, you know, if you cut through that line of stitching, you got a big repair you got to do. And I have seen plenty of students do that. That's why we just use the tips. Because if I use the tips, I know it's going to stop when I get to the end of the, of the scissors. Okay, I'm gonna have you do one more thing that's not in the directions. And this just comes from Ms. Jones being a teacher a really long time. I am going to have you do a finger press of this before we flip it out. So I've got the front of the pillows on the bottom and I'm just pulling this back so that I've got the seam exposed and I'm just running my finger along there 
And I don't even have a very, very big fingernail because they keep breaking off. Um, but I'm just run it along there so that when I flip this right side out, I'm less likely to have a valley. And I don't want to have a valley on the edge of my pizza. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. It is really all these little extra things that you do that end up making your um, project look like you want it to. When I have my students make projects, we do a lot of pressing. Pressing is important. It really does make a difference in whether or not you have a good looking project or whether it looks kind of funky. You know what? I'm going to do this bit on my own. The next time I come back, I am going to show you how to turn it right side out. Bye for now.